Ah, one, two, three, four. All right, we are grappling with the Ten Commandments. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. We're going to start a new series today, and that is on the Ten Commandments, uh, and we're going to consider the, uh, what they are. Now, I think most of the time, we think of the Ten Commandments kind of like the rules that are posted next to the swimming pool. You know, the rules that are there, and they say, hey, no glass bottles, and uh, no uh, uh, swimming if you're under 12, and uh, no swimming after 30 minutes for you eat or whatever. And, you know, we do it anyway. We kind of look the other way, and we go about our merry way. But we have to understand that the Ten Commandments are so much more than this. Here, I'll give you a little Luther quote. This is Luther from the Large Catechism. And he writes this, For it needs must be that whoever knows the Ten Commandments perfectly must know all the Scriptures, so that in all affairs and cases he can advise, help, comfort, judge, and decide both spiritual and temporal matters, and is qualified to sit in judgment on all doctrines, estates, spirits, laws, and whatever else is in the world. You see, that Luther says that the knowledge of the Ten Commandments, the perfect knowledge of the Ten Commandments, is what equips someone for dealing uh, in this world with anything that we have, both temporal and spiritual affairs. So the one who is, knows the Ten Commandments is ready to be a theologian, and the one that knows the Ten Commandments is in fact ready also to be president of the United States or whatever, whatever else. Luther continues, And what indeed is the entire Psalter, that means the book of Psalms, except thoughts and, ed, uh, and exercises upon the first commandment? Now I know the truth that such lazy paunches, and this, by the way, is who he's writing against in the introduction of the large catechism, the lazy paunches and presumptuous spirits don't understand a single psalm, much less, much less the entire Holy Scriptures, and yet they pretend to know and to despise the catechism, which is a compend or compendium and brief summary of all of the Holy Scriptures. So that remember the catechism, which has six chief parts, the first being the Ten Commandments, the second being the creed, the third being the Lord's Prayer, that this especially, and then we have baptism, confession, absolution, and the Lord's Supper, that this is a, uh, a summary of the entire Scripture, and the entire Scripture is an expansion of all of these things. Now, this is important, that the important role of the Ten Commandments in understanding the entirety of the Scripture, so that when we're reading the Scripture, we say, what commandment does it have to deal with? What part of the creed does it have to do with? And when we're reading the Ten Commandments, we say, what part of the Scripture does this refer? Now, to, to move beyond the idea of the pool rules, we want to understand that in the Ten Commandments, God is both um, uh, teaching and protecting his institutions. So that he is saying that, uh, that the Ten Commandments are, in fact, the way that the world is ordered. Now, we're going to get into this quite a bit more, but we'll just have a, a brief look at it here. And that we understand that these institutions, um, in fact, are the Lord's gifts. Now, I remember one time when I was a kid, we, we had a house there, and behind the house there was a hill and uh, in Texas, and we'd always play on that hill, and then there was a second hill that kind of went up like this, and then there was a third hill like this, and I remember when we were finally old enough to wander all the way back to the third hill, we found this big, tall thing, uh, big, what we figured was a missile silo, because around it was a fence, and, uh, and a chain link fence with barbed wire around it, and this tall, white metal thing. Now, we were sure that either there was some sort of satellite or spy, something in there, or whatever. Now, we knew that it was important because of the fence that was around it. We knew that because someone wanted to protect it so much, that whatever that was had to be of high value. So what did we do? Well, we did what all kids do. We took rocks, and we threw rocks at it. <laughs> it was a water tower, by the way. I mean, that's that's what it was, and I suppose that's fairly important. But you know that something is important if it's being protected. Well, each of the commandments should be understood as fences around the Lord's institutions 
and gifts. So that in the first commandment, the Lord gives us the gift of himself. The second commandment, the Lord gives us the gift of his name. That's the gift of prayer, and he wants us to use it. The third commandment, the Lord gives us the gift of his word. The fourth commandment, he, the Lord gives us the gift of authority. And that's family and state and all the other forms of authority in the world. In the fifth commandment, he gives us the gift of life. In the sixth commandment, he gives us the gift of marriage. In the seventh commandment, he gives us the gift of property. And in the eighth commandment, he gives us the gift of a good name. Uh, here he gives us his name, and here he gives us our name. He gives us the gift of truth. And in the ninth and tenth commandments, he gives us the gift of contentment. Now, all of these gifts are, are, are institutions of God, and the devil is constantly fighting against them. So we see that the Ten Commandments are, in fact, a much bigger thing than what we first think. So there it is, the importance of God's commandments and the institution of the Ten Commandments. Next time, the history of the Lord giving the commandments at Mount Sinai. Subscribe. I'm going to put this on the last page here. Look at this. You can subscribe to Worldview Everlasting, clicking here. Look at this. This is about as permanent as things, as things get around here. Wait, there. There's the subscribe button. Look at, do you see how when I do this, I subject myself to people making fun of how hairy my knuckles are? I do this for you, dear listener. Watcher. Viewer. -er. You can like it, click there, below. All right, see you next time. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, ten, or twenty-five dollars is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click donate now. Jesus.